Good evening. Welcome once again to the Tabernacle Baptist Church midweek Bible study. We're so glad that you're joining with us at this time. We look forward to it each and every opportunity that we have. We hope tonight will be that message that will meet the need that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you and that you'll accept it. If it's for salvation, I hope he will help you see that Christ died to pay the price that you or I could be saved and that he will open up your heart and let you see that he willingly went to the cross, became sin who knew no sin, that we might have that righteousness that we could be forgiven and the condemnation that was upon us because of sin has been paid for and there we can come into the very presence of God the Father through Jesus Christ is our high priest. Oh, listen to me. I pray the Holy Spirit will let you see that. And then believer, if you are faithful, I pray God will strengthen you and encourage you and help you continue to fight the good fight of faith. But also believer, if your life is beginning to wander, you're beginning to slowly slip out of that joy of his salvation. You're beginning to just drift away slowly. I pray God will encourage you. I pray that you come to realize that it's almost over. It's almost over. It's too close to being over to quit, to give up. It's soon going to sound the trumpet. The dead in Christ are going to rise. We that alive remain or will be called out. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We can see the finish line, ladies and gentlemen. I believe we can see the finish line. And stay true. Stay true. Don't give up. Be like Paul. Fight the good fight of faith. You can do that through the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. The Bible said, I can do all things through Christ which strengthen me. I know it's a difficult time. It appears that there's pressure everywhere. It seems like that there's a vacuum that's trying to suck the very joy of being a Christian out. But that's of the devil. That's of the devil. He knows he has but a short time. Don't allow that. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Think about that. Please, re reconsider. You've begun the good fight of faith. Continue in the grace of God. We come tonight and we, we want to look at 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and the last part of the verse. And I, I want to speak to you on a message entitled, Willing to Save. Will, excuse me, Willing to Serve. Willing to serve. Who then? Now, that's a whosoever question. It's addressed to every single person. It's not to an elect group. It's not to a special group. It's not to only a group. That encompasses everyone. Who then? And here's what God is looking for. The attitude of Willing to consecrate, that means to dedicate or commit our service as a believer this very day unto the Lord. Let me say that again. He's asking from the heart. And that heart has to be right. The natural man doesn't understand the things of God. Neither can he comprehend them for they're spiritually discerned. The carnal Christian, he or she can't understand what God is asking. You still have to be fed milk. You're not able to uh, handle uh, the meat of the word. But he's asking, look at it. Who then is willing? And that means who's willing to put their heart completely 
in to the service of the Lord. Look at it. This day. So I want to speak to you willing to serve. Father God. Thank you for the opportunity. To share the word of God. We pray for the anointing. We pray that every single word. Will be that which. You will ordain. And the Holy Spirit. Will grant that knowledge. That needs to be shared. In the power that only he can provide. Through this message. We pray that Christ might be lifted up. The Bible said. If he's lifted up. He will draw all men. We pray that the Holy Spirit. Will open the heart of that unbeliever. To let them see. That Christ. Willingly. Willingly. Nobody took his life. He laid it down willingly. He laid it down willingly. You know what sent Christ to the cross? It was to fulfill the mission that the Father had commissioned him. But it was because that he was the only way that we could be saved. Therefore it was his love that caused not only to obey the Father. But to provide the opportunity for you and I to be born again and become children of God. Holy Spirit, help that unbeliever realize that and see that. And then strengthen those. I know it's difficult times. I myself face difficult times every day. But greater is he that is in me and greater is he that is in all Christians. And we can call out upon him because he will never leave nor forsake us. He won't remove these trials, but he'll never let us go through them by ourselves. So bless the message and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. The word of God has a great deal to say about one's willingness to serve God. If ye love me, you will keep my commandments. Every thing that the Lord refers to you and I and our relation to him is to be based upon that reciprocal love. You see, the Bible said not that we loved him, but that he loved us first. And because of the great love that God has for us, he commanded that love toward us and while we were yet sinners. He wants those that will respond to him with that unconditional love concerning his will for their life. To obey him. To serve him. To love him. To praise him. To give him glory. God is looking for those who will consecrate or who will completely dedicate or set themselves aside from personal pleasure to be capable and able servants of Almighty God to lift up Christ. God is not looking for slaves. It was sin that made us slaves. But it was through Christ that we were free. If we be in Christ, we're free indeed. And God wants us to appreciate and show him how much we appreciate that freedom from the condemnation and of sin. And realize the price he paid through Christ. And be willing to have that love for him. His love is unconditional. The agape love. <clears throat> As far as it's possible for a human being, our love ought to be unconditional also for God. Nothing should be able, nothing should be able to dampen that, to destroy that, to deter that. Think about that. And God says, he's looking forward for that one. He said it again. Let me read the text once more. Who then is willing to consecrate his service this day? Don't be like Esau. He thought after a, a certain amount of years, then he could just pick up where he left and he could come back and serve God on his own time. 
And the Bible says, though he sought it carefully with tears, there was found no place of repentance. Let me tell you something. If you think you might be able to serve God tomorrow, you could be fooled because there may not be to no tomorrow for you. He said today. Today is the accepted time. And God's looking for that person who will give his or her life completely and totally without reservation because they love him. Not because they have to. Not because if they don't do it, well, it won't get done. That's a farce that the devil tries to put in us because he reminded the prophet he had 7,000 that he could put in our place. He wants you as an individual, ladies and gentlemen. That's how important you are to God. Think about that. That's how important that you are to God, that God wants you to love him and serve him. He wants you to be part of his family. Think about that. King David asked the people an important question as he prepared or his preparation was being made for the construction of the temple. And I don't believe there's any greater or more important question that can be asked of a believer. The greatest question asked of a lost person is, will you accept Jesus Christ today? As the Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? That's the most important question to the unbeliever. And of course, the answer, believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou and thy house shall be saved. But to the believer, to the believer, the most important question that can be asked of you who claim you've been to Calvary, who claim you've confessed your sin, who claim you've repented, who claims that you've trusted Jesus Christ, experienced the new birth, have been born again, and you're that new creature in Christ. The greatest question that can be asked of you is what David asked. Here in 1 Chronicles 29, verse 5, the be part. Who then is willing, not forceful, not forceful. Who is willing? You see, God, ladies and gentlemen, wants us to want to love him. He wants us to want to serve him. He wants us to want to please him. Because there's nobody that could ever be in our life that will equal our Heavenly Father or our Savior. Or even the Holy Spirit who has sealed us until the day of redemption. No one can ever love you like they do. No one can ever do for you what they have done for us. Oh, God in heaven, give us, give us an awakening that you just want us to love you. That you just want us to love you. And oh, is that not a desire in our own heart how we want to be loved? Oh, I want to be loved by my family. I want to be loved by my friends. Love is one of the greatest needs that we have. And we got that from you, Lord. We were created in your image, and that's one of those images we need and desire love. But in order to get the love that we need, we first need to be able to give that love. We need to know how that love has been given to us so we can restore it or we can give it to those that love us. Look at it. Look at it. Willing service is honorable. Nobody wants to do what they have to do. Nobody will give their whole heart to something when they're commanded or demanded you do this without any choice. But it's not so with God. It's not so with God. Willing service is acceptable. Willing service is expected. You know, Love is a, a verb. You, you, you know what the word love? The word love expects, think about this now, expects to be responded to. Love said, there's my love, now give me your love. And Christ did that. God the Father did that. He commanded his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. God sent his love out. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world 
Think about that. And, and, and love is that, is that verb that says, here's mine. Now where's yours? And oh, it's, it's a tragedy from the physical standpoint to love somebody. I mean, deeply love somebody and there's no positive response back. It's an emotional and spiritual punishment. Think about how we punish the Lord. Think of how we disappoint the Father when that love was given immutable, unlimited, unlimited. It's the same all time, no matter how. But think about how we abuse that. Think about how the sinner abuses that. When God so loved them as he loved us that he gave his son. And then think about it, believer. Look how good God's been to you. Look how good he's been to me. Even today, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll pause, we do not have any concept of how good God's been to us already. He daily loadeth us with his benefits. Our worst day, our worst day with Jesus Christ has been greater than our best day, which we was deceived to think it was without him. Oh, look how good God's been to us, ladies and gentlemen. Think about that. Why should we be willing to serve God? Is it really important that I serve God? I'm saved, once saved, always saved. I'm going to heaven. So what big deal? Is it, is it really important that I serve God? I mean, I've been secured for heaven. My sins have been forgiven. Jesus Christ paid my debt. Think about that. Is it really important? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And there are those who will say, why not just let someone else do it? These are real questions that we each need to answer. And I believe this day is a perfect opportunity to consider our willing service to the Lord. First of all, why we should serve the Lord, we fulfill his purpose. Ecclesiastes 3.1 To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. First of all, God's purpose is for all to be saved. 1 Timothy 2, 3 and 4. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Secondly, God has a purpose for us after we're born again. Ephesians 2, 10. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we see very carefully, we fulfill God's purpose. That says, to seek the salvation of whosoever will. To be the effective witnesses, to go out because it's God's will that none die, but all come to everlasting life. Look at it. And then we were created for this purpose, to be conformed to the image of Christ, to fulfill the mission that God gives us through Christ, to glorify Him. And then number two, we reflect God's glory. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now whether you realize it or not, our children reflect us as their parents. In much the same way we are to reflect our Heavenly Father. What do folks see when they look at us if we identify ourselves as a Christian? What do they see? What do they see? What do they hear when they listen to us after we have identified ourselves as a Christian? Huh? What kind of language do we talk? What kind of behavior do we have? What kind of value system do we possess? What's the authority in our life? Is it the word of God or is it the flesh? Do they see Christ in us? Don't you remember in the New Testament when they were asked at Antioch, when they said, we would see Jesus, we would see Jesus. And God left us, ladies and gentlemen, to reflect his glory, which is Christ. Think about that. Think about that. That's why we ought to be willing to serve the Lord. 
and we ought to be able to consecrate our life or to wrap our life around the will of God. To walk in the power of the Spirit. He that walks in the power of the Spirit will not feel the lust of the flesh. Think about that, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we ought to be willing to serve the Lord. Oh, now I would go so far as to say, I know I didn't, but I do hope that in growing up, that I did not deliberately cause reproach upon my family. Now, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. But you don't realize, ladies and gentlemen, how some folks have literally destroyed the reputation of their family based upon their wicked living. Ought not to be right. Well, it ought not to be that Christ is punished because a believer won't live the life they're supposed to. It ought not to be, it's not right for the Lord to re not receive the glory that's due Him. It's not right to Father God for us as a believer to disobey Him after He has provided what He's provided. Oh, that's, that's sorry, sorry, sorry. Attitudes when we deliberately, now we're not perfect, but he remembers we're dust. Remember? He knows that we're not perfect, but ladies and gentlemen, when we disappoint him or we disobey him, it ought to be a temporary or it ought to be a stumbling. It ought not to be assumed back to that old carnal life and bring reproach upon him. Oh, listen. And then number three in closing, we impact eternity. Jude 1, 21 and 22. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some having compassion, making a difference. Sometimes the enemy tries to convince us that what we do is insignificant. And to our shame, he's been pretty successful. It seems he can discourage us in a moment. But look how much time we force the Lord to spend on us to encourage us. But Satan can just whisper to us and discourage us. He can bring a memory to our mind. He can show an incident. He can bring a person in our life. And automatically, but look how often the Lord has to bear with us and patience, mercy, and grace to bring us back to the encouragement. What we do for the Lord is fulfilling His purpose. It not only glorifies Him, but it impacts eternity. You know where most people come to Christ? Of course, it's through the preaching or the witnessing of the Word, but it's through the evidence that that Word is real by the changed life of a believer. You see, what gave authority even to Christ's message, ladies and gentlemen, was his lifestyle. It was, he lived out what he preached. He lived out what he taught. He showed in his life that the word of God was real. Oh, we have paid such a horrible price. By failing to remember that example is the power of what is spoken. What is spoken? What do you think Paul said to the Corinthians? He said in Christ that old life should be gradually passing away and being replaced by that new life. Now it don't happen like this. But there ought to be some progress. And every once in a while there will be a standstill or a little back. But it ought to eventually, we're moving forward to that new life in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And one day when the rapture takes place and we receive our glorified body, we'll arrive. We will then be as Christ is. But until then, we're in a battle. We're in a war. But we can win it in Christ. Oh, listen to me. Why should we be willing to serve God? It's how he reveals his purpose in our lives. It reflects his glory to those around us. And it will make an impact for all of eternity. Listen. Listen. The Bible said very plainly. 
1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. May we rise to the occasion today to consecrate our life where we can be usable, effective servants for the cause of Christ. Heavenly Father, thank you that you would even give us an opportunity to serve you. Oh, Father, help us to see what love, knowing who we are and what we are. And yet you give us an opportunity to carry your word and live your life in Christ to a lost and sinful world. Oh, Father, help us to see that's a privilege. That's an honor. That we should, we should be willing to pay whatever price it is to keep that life usable. Help those that are believers to consecrate if they have it or if they have to reconsecrate their life to willing service. You don't want people to serve you because they have to. We're not under law. We're under grace. You want us to read your Bible because you want us to love you enough to hear from you. You want us to assemble together to show that we love each other and we love you. You want us to, to go out and treat people as you treated us to prove that you love them as you love us. You want us, Lord, to be that, be that light that shines into the dark world. But we can't do it, Lord, without the power of the Holy Spirit. And we can't have the effectiveness of the power of the Holy Spirit if we're not walking in true love and true obedience to you. Save that one that's unsaved. Reclaim that one that stumbled. Encourage that one that is contending for the faith. Bless this message now and we'll praise you in Christ's name. Amen. Till we meet again, may God bless you as our prayer. Yeah.